Welcome everyone to our first ever how to presentation. We have a very, very special guest with us today, and that is SJ all the way from Norway. SJ is the director of social media with Celebration Magazine. So without further ado, we had 91 people registered for today. That is fantastic. And SJ, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. And firstly, I'd like to welcome everyone to the first of many how-to events. Um, Celebration Magazine have created this series to teach you all something new. So in this how-to series, Celebration Magazine will be bringing experts and educators to teach you all the things that you've always wanted to learn. Today, we're going to be learning the basics ins and outs of Facebook and how to set up your secure profile. So firstly, let's talk about social media. Can anyone remember the fax machine? That was one of the first ways that we as humans connected. And as time has gone on, so is technology, bringing everything now online. People have created all different platforms for us to connect, and one of them being Facebook. Facebook is our main topic today, so let's talk about Facebook. Facebook is a social network networking site, and it was made to make e um, the connection between your friends, your family, and of course, us at Celebration Magazine online. It was created in 2004 by a gentleman called Mark Zuckerberg, and he actually created this when he was enrolled in um, university at Harvard. Facebook has over 1 billion users, and that continually grows every single day. And who knows, after today's how-to series, we might get over 90 new uh, Facebook users. So it's a free platform. And once you get going, it's pretty easy to use. And if you have any questions, like so said, put them in the chat box if you know how to write them, or keep them in your head and we can talk about them. Um, throughout the whole um, how-to se series today, um, if you do have any questions, I am going to stop at certain points. And so we'll read those questions to me and I can answer them. If there's anything I do not know, I won't pretend that I don't know it. I will do my research and I will get back to you personally. Um, so just remember that. Um, so firstly, in order to make a Facebook account, we need an email address. And seeing as we all have got onto this Zoom account today, We've already done the first step. So we've already got ourselves an email address. I am now going to uh, share screen and we are going to start the process of learning how to create our very own Facebook page. Account, sorry. Okay, so the first thing we need to be doing, I just need to move this in, is going to www. Can everyone see my screen? Just give me a thumbs up or so and down, let me know. Yeah, we can see. Fantastic. So we need to go to www.facebook.com and we're going to be given this screen. We're going to be asked um, whether we want to log in. Many of us on today's Zoom already have a Facebook account, so you know how to add your details in. But many of us don't, so we need to create a new account. So this green button at the bottom here is where we need to be going. So create new account. We're gonna click on this and it's going to give us options to fill out before we can enter the Facebook. So first name, for today's purpose, because I already have an account, I am gonna be using my middle name and my last name. So my middle name is Jane. So I'm gonna be putting that in and my last name is Middleton. Okay, so you can put either your mobile number or your email address. I personally don't need to have my mobile number on my uh, Facebook account. So hold on one second, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna put my email address. So my email address for this purpose is Jane Middleton. 1111 at gmail.com. We're going to enter that email address again. Jane Middleton 1111 at gmail.com. 
passwords, asking us to create a password. Now, because of the updates of software, it could ask us um, if, we, if, they want, if we want them to create a password for us. I do not want that today. However, I am going to create my password. And what I do is I do write my passwords down. I have an awful memory and I need to make sure that I know my passwords. If you can remember your passwords, fantastic. But what I would personally do is write down my passwords and put it somewhere safe. There is certain um, websites that you can store your passwords and I can talk about that in, a, in an email maybe in the future. But for me and my personal um, need, I just write them on a piece of paper and I put them somewhere where they, I know that they're going to be safe. And I don't write on it passwords. I just write on a piece of paper. So I am going to write in my password today. Okay, done deal. Now, the next thing you need to do is add in your date of birth. Now, when we create a Facebook page, we don't need to be sharing this with everybody. I will teach you the, um, the way to um, not make it public. But for the preferences of this particular video, we are going to be choosing your birthday. Now, as we can all see, I chose 1111. So my birthday is the 11th of the 11th. And I'm actually gonna do my date of birth. I'm a young one. So we're doing 1991 here. And I'm gonna click female and click sign up. Okay, so now it's loading. It is going to take us to the Facebook page. Has everybody, um, is everybody with me right now or do we need, um, do we have any questions? We are doing so far so good. We do have a question about privacy, but I'll hold that till we get to that section. Yeah, we were, we're gonna go through all of that momentarily. So it says, enter your code from your email. Let us know about the email address that belongs to you and enter the code from your email address sent to Jane Middleton, 1111 at gmail.com. Now, depending on your uh, email um, software that you're using, it could take a little while for it to come through. So you have to have a little bit of patience. For me, I use Gmail and it looks like it has gone through very, very quickly. For your information, if you ever um, open up your, your email and it's not there, what I advise you to do is go into the search engine and you can type in Facebook. And when you press enter, it is going to give you that email. That's another good trick to have when it comes to also the Celebration Magazine emails. If, for example, you're not getting the Celebration Magazines or they're going to your junk or the spam, or maybe you get quite a lot of emails throughout the day and it's quite annoying for you to have to go through them to get the Zoom links or anything like that, you could just type in Celebration Magazine and press enter. And of course, I don't have any in this email address, but they will give you the list of all the emails that um, Celebration Magazine sends you. So let's go back to Facebook because that's where we want to go. So Facebook. Now, it has asked us our confirmation um, digit. So you have two options here. You could copy this number or write it down, or you could just click confirm your account. For the purpose of this um, video, we're just gonna click the button because it seems like the easiest way to go. So I'm gonna confirm my account. It's redirecting me and pulled up another tab for Facebook. And now it's letting me into my account. Now, Facebook try and make it as easy as possible for the user. So it is going to notify us step-by-step step how to make an account. So even though I am talking today about how we're gonna make an account, it should be pretty straightforward. So it says account confirmed, you have successfully confirmed your account with this email address and you will need this same email address for when you sign it. I'm gonna press okay. And here we are, we are in Facebook. Now it is asking us if we want to remember the password. Now, if you are using your personal password um, software at home, if you are using your personal computer, then you can click OK, um, because then, you know, if you 
don't want to remember your password and you're the only person going on the Facebook page, then it's okay to have it in your browser if you want. However, today I'm actually using my sister's laptop and as much as I love her, I don't need to be logged in. So I'm gonna click not now. And always, you don't need to be logged in onto anyone's, uh, onto your own desktop with your Facebook account. You can sign out if you've kept your passwords and you know your email address. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So we're going to go through the first steps of creating a Facebook account. So the first thing we need to be doing is adding our profile picture. So if we go onto this page here, we'll see there's my name and we see edit profile here and activity log. You'll see a picture of a individual and it says add photo. That's where we wanna be clicking. So add photo and it says upload photo. So I am going to click this. So you can upload a picture of yourself or like many people, you could upload a picture of your dog. Today, I don't have a dog, so I wish I did have a dog, but I am gonna upload a picture of a lovely dog, just for an example. While so that's Lila uploading, SJ, <laughs> um, someone did ask if this is a, a new Facebook, um, but is it, is, it, um, is it possible that it looks different because you're on a Mac and maybe they're used to looking at it through a PC? It, yes, if you're, it, 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 it could be that. Um, this Facebook is always developing. However, the fundamental steps, it will look different on whatever, whatever software you're using. If you're using a desktop, if you're using a mask, but the steps are the same. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Okay. So when you've uploaded hmm. your, um, your profile picture, you get to move it around to make sure it um, fits in the circle. And if it doesn't, then you can choose a different photo. But for me, I'm happy with that. If I could zoom in, I can zoom out, that's okay. You can create a description if you want to, but I don't need to today. So I'm just gonna click save. I am happy with that. Okay, after you're finished uploading this picture, SJ, we did have someone ask how to change the picture. Can you show us how to do that after this one is done uploading? Of course. Of course. Wonderful. So we're just loading here. And just to let everyone know really quick, if you ask a question, um, I am writing them down and may save the question until we get to a section where SJ is talking about um, those things, okay? Okay, so to change our profile picture, we have some options. So first one, if we just hover over the same photo that we've just uploaded, we can change our photo again. So all we need to do is click upload and your photo that you wanna use needs to be on the um, desktop or it needs to be in a file somewhere. So make sure that whatever photo you do want to use, it is on your computer. Um, so all you need to do is hover over the photo, click upload and upload the photo of choice. And Facebook do have these fun little things now and then, and you can um, add frames um, and you can choose from a, a, a numerous amount of frames. Um, and you can choose how long you want it on there. And uh, there's so much you can do now. So that is how you change um, your profile picture. Um, cover photos, they're a different, they're a different kind of add-on you don't need a cover photo. It, I don't use one, so it's, it's not needed. But the same thing as the profile picture, you just hover over where it says add cover photo, you click it, and you can either select artwork, create a collage, or you upload. So if we did select artwork, it gives us actually a choice of what Facebook have kind of said, oh, we can use this. So the lady before had lovely art in her, um, in her house, she could use her son's art or they're providing some good art for us here. So we're gonna use that today. Okay, fantastic, we're getting there. Beautiful cover photo there, I wish I had that in my house. Okay, so the next steps that we're gonna take is editing our profile. Now this is optional. 
and we're going to go through the reasons why it is optional and what is optional. So we can go through edit bio. So you can talk about yourself in here. You can say, hello, cat lock, hello. Hello, my name is, for the purpose of this, Jane. But you don't need to add it if you don't want to. You can add additional photos. So if you have any grandbabies or if you have any photos of fews, I know a few of you go for your morning walks around the lakes. So you could add photos of the lakes if you wanted to. And all you need to do to do that is hover over these particular buttons and you click on them and you can upload. You can either upload or you can choose one that you already have on your Facebook account. So we're gonna scroll down to edit your about info. I'm gonna click this and it's gonna take us to a different page. Now, if you wanted to, Facebook has not made this something that you have to do. On my own account, I don't have any of this information. It is not needed. But if you do want to have it, you do have the option of adding it. You can add your workplace. So you can just click on add workplace. And then you can type in where you've worked, what was your job title, your town, your description, and if you currently work there or when, is, um, when was the last time you worked there. And let's just say as well, let's go back onto that one. You can also make that specific to who it is that you want to see. So if you just want your friends to see it, you can choose you just want your friends to see it. If you want friends except certain friends to see it, you can also do that. If you want only you to see it, you can also do that, which that is a good option because that's, oh, well, it's not gonna let me because I haven't, ha I haven't chose a work place. But that's a good option. And I'll talk about that when we go to our um, birth date um, so that we can actually hide it from everybody. So the same thing, you can add your professional skills, you can add your university. My dad, on his Facebook page, he didn't go to university, so he actually wrote on his, the University of Life, which I think we all have been to. So that is the work and education. You can add, if you want, where you're living, you can add your hometown, and you can add other places you live. You don't have to, it's an option. It's an option to say um, where about you live, but you don't have to put it. The next thing we're gonna go over is contact and basic info. Now, the email address. Remember before I put the email address, but I've hidden it from the timeline so no one can see it. That is there. It says add mobile, add address, add website, add social. You don't need to be adding any of these. If you don't, it, it, actually, I can say that I personally don't, you don't need to add any of these. Unless you have a business that you're using Facebook for, then I would see no need in you adding your mobile, just your email address in order to have access. They do ask for possibly for you to be able to add a mobile so that if you forget your password, you can use your mobile number to reactivate it. But you can also do that with your email address. And you can also do that in different ways in which we will go further into detail. So we're scrolling down. Add website, we do not need to do it. Add social links, once again, we do not need to do it. Date of birth, we can hide this. So if I hover over the little edit button, I'm going to click this. And it's going to give me an option. As much as I love my date of birth, I don't need anybody to be seeing it. So. I'm going to change both of those to only me. If you feel comfortable in letting people know when your date of birth is, because once you have your date of birth on your Facebook, um, your Facebook friends are actually notified when it is your birthday. So that's a good thing about it because you can never really forget a birthday if someone has their, their birthday publicly on there. So for me, I'm pretty bad at remembering people's birthdays. So I always get a notification. It's this person's birthday. So then that reminds me, oh, I should send them a message. But I don't really need anybody to know my birthday and the people that do know my birthday, they should know it. So we're gonna save changes. Perfect. And relationships with family. Say for example, you are on Facebook for the sole purpose of connecting with your loved ones. Um, I know that I use it 
as well as obviously Celebration Magazine. I use my personal account to connect with friends and family, being in a different country to them. Um, Facebook is a great tool to connect overseas. My boyfriend is living in Texas. My family is living in Texas. All my friends are scattered around the world. So I love to be able to connect on there. So you can actually add your family members if they are your Facebook friends. So you just hover over it, like again, and you click add. Now you do need to have them as a Facebook friend in order to make them a Facebook family member. However, I do not have any friends yet on this account. So we will not be doing that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is searching for people. So all you need to do is go up into this search engine and you need to click it. And you need to type in a name in which you want to search. So your family members, your friends, it's going to give you a list of everyone. So for this example, we're gonna search Zoe Celebration. Let me see. There's our lovely Zoe, Zoe Celebration. So I'm gonna send her a lovely friend request. And then sooner or later, no, you're okay for now, Zoe. But sooner or later, she is going to be my Facebook friend. Now, for example, if we send somebody a Facebook friend request and we're, we didn't want to, we didn't mean it, all we need to do is hover over that and go down to cancel request. And that's going to cancel the request that we made with that person. And that's a good thing to know because sometimes when we're on our computers, we can press buttons that we don't mean to and we don't want to send the wrong people a Facebook request. So let's go back to our page because we're going to be touching now, which is what everybody's questions are is privacy. So we're going to go into our settings. So we see at the top, it says Jane, home, find friends. Let's firstly, before we go into settings, just show you another way that you can find friends. So we're going to click friends. And it is going to say that I currently have no friend requests, but they are going to give me a list of maybe some people that are in my area or are connected to my email address. And that's a good thing to know because if you don't know um, a person's last name, but you're good friends with them on your email and you email them a lot, it's more than likely that they can come up in your um, account. Now let's go to privacy. So, okay, real, so real quick, let me go through a couple of these questions that um, apply kind of to this area. So we had someone ask, what happens if you've forgotten your password? So what happens when you forget your password? We can briefly go over that now. So I am going to um, log out. And I am going to see, see where it says forgotten password here. We're going to click on forgotten password and it's going to ask us to put in our email address. So we're going to do that. Jane. We're going to search and it's going to send us another confirmation code. So if I go back into my email, and I go into my inbox, I have another email from Facebook right here, it's going quick. Mm -hmm. Bear with me one second, that's not the one that we want. So like I said, we have to be a little patient with Facebook sometimes. It will send us an email and basically saying, oh, you've logged out. Are you meaning to do that? Or would you need some assistance to get back in? So we're going to click on that button. And we're back in our account. But other than that, if they don't send us an email like that, they will send us another email that says, hey, you've forgotten your password. Click on this button. We can reset your password. And then it will give you an option to type in a brand new password. So that is a good option. If you forget your password, you, lock, you, you go to the, the main screen, you click, I forgot password, and it's going to assist you in the next steps. Okay. Any other questions, Joe? 
Uh, the only other one that actually is a question that I was thinking about too is, so Paulette wanted to know if you add your high school, will it help you connect with your former classmates? It can do if they have, um, if they have added their high school too. So if they've added their high school, then it is more than likely that, um, that you can connect through that. But if they haven't added their high school, then it's not possible. You can only find the people that give the information. So if they haven't given that information, then you won't be um, able to um, find those people. But that's a good thing. That means that whatever information you're putting out there is the information that they are going to be receiving. Is that the last question on that? Um, so far, yes. Some other stuff deals with messenger and private, um, privacy information. So I will let you continue on. Okay. So oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I apologize. One more thing. So, uh, Mary was asking if you can edit your name to add your maiden name. So how would you, you edit, edit your name? You can do that. So we'll go over that now. Um, so there's, all at the top bar here, like we said before, Jane, home, find friends, create, and then there's an icon that has friend requests. And that's if, if anybody has sent you any friend requests, you can click on that, it's gonna notify you. Um, messages, if someone sends you a message, you can click that, it's gonna notify you. And if you get any notifications whatsoever, um, if you've been, if someone's commented or someone has, um, if you've commented, someone's replied to you, it's going to give you a notification. If you need any help whatsoever, Facebook do give you the function that if you click here, you can type in your question and it will do its best to help you too. Now, if you click this little arrow, it's going to give you little options. We have fine groups, advertising on Facebook, activity logs, newsfeed, preferences, and settings we obviously are gonna go into the settings part of things. So we've just said about um, putting your maiden name. So this is where we're gonna be doing this. So general account settings. If I wanted to change my name, so you click on the edit button where it says name and you can put your middle name, your surname. And what I would do if I wanna put, if you wanted to put your maiden name, I would just put it before hmm. or after, whichever is preferred. And then you do have to uh, review these changes with Facebook. Um, and then once you do change them, um, you can't change it again for another uh, period of time. So if you read here, it says, please note, if you change your name on Facebook, you can't change it for another 60 days. Don't add any unusual capitalization, punctuation, characters, or random words. So just make sure that whatever details that you are wanting to put in, you put them in correctly the first time because it will be difficult to change. Does that answer your question? Let's hope it does. If it I doesn't, think, let me know and I'll go for it. Yeah, I think it does. I do not see any messages that say it did not. Okay, so the next one is username. So if you have a short name, so for example, my name is SJ. It's short, shortened version of Sarah Jane. I could add my username so that when people are searching me, they just need to type in SJ and I'm gonna come up on their screen. So if you have, any nicknames or if you have um, a certain name that you go by, you can add that in. For this, it's giving us my, um, oh, it's asking me to verify my account. I don't need to have a nickname and it's asking me to verify by a telephone number. For me, I'm fine with my name. I don't want to personally add my per uh, mobile number. I don't have to, so it's not for me. My primary contact details is my email address that I've used and my identity, um, identity confirmation is just to confirm that identity such as things as running ads and social issues. We don't need any of that. So we're going to skip on. We're going to go on to the security and login. Now, I know many, many people have questions about security. The good thing that Facebook now offers is that it tracks wherever you're logging in. So if you're logging from another software, it is going to tell you in this section. So you go to the little arrow, you're clicking settings, and you're going to security and login. Because I don't wanna add my mobile number, you can choose three to five friends that you can, um, so if you get logged out, 
it will ask you about these particular people that you choose to verify that you are the person that you're saying you are. So for me, when I have friends on this account, I would use that option because to me, I don't want to put my mobile number on there. So that's the safest option for me. So that is the one that I would go for. Now it says here, where are you logged in? It says, I am logged in on a Mac and it's in Stavanger, Norway. That is correct. I am in um, Stavanger, Norway and I am logged in on a Mac. On my other laptop, if I was to pull it up, it would say that I am also logged in on my phone and logged in on my iPad, which is correct. They are the only two softwares, uh, only three softwares, the only three machines that I use. So if this was to come up with anything else, I would know that somebody else is using my account and I would report it. Um, and it will also notify you, um, your Facebook, will notify you just like your Gmail does. If you have unpeculiar um, activity going on, it will notify you to say, um, if you remember your password, make it a good one and make sure you have it in a safe place. The chances are of you getting hacked or having somebody enter your profile because of the new regulations on Facebook. I'm not saying that they don't happen because we live in this world where there are people that can hack into Facebook um, in your account, but I've never had a problem and these steps are safe where you can see physically who is logging into your account. And I know that is me, no one else is. That's my IP address. I am safe to go. Now, if you wanted at any time to change your password, you can do that. You just click on change password and it's going to give you, you don't even have to type in your old one. You're just going to put in your new password. The next one, save your login. Um, if you choose to have it saved on browsers or devices, you can do that. If you don't, you can also turn that off. You can click it to save it, or you can remove your account if you ever wanted to remove your account. Now for me, I only have one. Um, it's only on this particular computer, so I don't need to do any of those things. The other options, they are for phone uses only. And they are um, uses that I don't even use. They are for um, just to say that it is you that's using it. Um, I don't need to use it. I use a password and my, my phone in particular has face recognition. It only allows me in it, except for my twin sister who can also log into my phone. That's another story for another day. So we don't need to be going over any of the other options um, because we've talked about them briefly and they are more to do with business accounts. Um, so we're going to go back up to the top and we are going to go on to okay, I do information. Yeah, I do have one question. Someone mm -hmm. did ask, um, is there a way that you can prevent your account from being hacked or accessed by someone else? So the way to prevent your account from being hacked by somebody else is to make sure that you're taking the correct procedures and you're making sure that your password is a good password. With everything um, in life, like it's just about being secure and the information that I'm putting personally onto Facebook is not a lot of information. There is no, there, there, I'm not needing to put my bank details. I'm not, you shouldn't put your bank details. You don't have to put your bank details on Facebook. So there's nothing that anyone that can go onto my profile will find interesting or want to have. So the correct way of answering that question is just make sure that your password is a good one, just like you do with everything else in your life. And that is that. Um, any more questions on that before we go into the next stage of privacy? Um, I don't believe so. I think we're good so far. Okay. So the next part is privacy settings and tools. So it's this one here. You click on it and it's going to give you some options. Now, if you want to learn more about the privacy, it's actually giving us um, an option to click and learn about the, um, about the answers that people have probably asked questions about. So there, all the questions that you probably have have probably been answered in this particular tab. 
So if I clicked here, it's going to take me and redirect me over to Facebook's other privacy basis. And it's going to talk me over um, all of the different steps and different topics that Facebook offers. We're going to go back to privacy though. So this is going to be on posts and your activity within your Facebook page. In a second, I will teach you how to create a post. But now we're just going to make sure before we do that, that it's going to the people that we want it to go to. So here where it says your activity, this is who can see your future posts. Now, I don't know about you, but if I have, if I'm on Facebook, I kind of want Facebook friends to be able to see my posts, but I don't need to have public. So I'm going to make sure that I've clicked friends, just friends. And because it's already on friends, I don't need to save it. You can also, um, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of something called being tagged to something. So basically, if somebody has a Facebook account, they, um, I will show you momentarily how to tag somebody or how you would tag somebody. Um, but they can tag you into a photo or into a post. And then you'll get a notification, this little bell over here that will tell you. Now you can actually have to, you can actually give yourself an option where you approve these posts before they enter your page. So in order to do that, it says here, view all posts and things that you're tagged to. Use activity log. You're clicking on here, and it's going to take you, obviously we haven't posted anything yet, but um, it's going to take you to anything that you've ever been tagged to. You have to tick it. You have to approve it before it goes onto your timeline, which I think is a great option um, because there's, you know, for, for me, when I was, when, when I would be going out and, you know, someone would take a photo of me and I would be thinking I'm all very cute. And then all of a sudden I'd see this photo and, it would be like a double chin and I'd be like, oh no. So I could approve those photos before they enter my Facebook. These days, not many people do that anymore, but if they do, there is an option for you to be able to check it before it goes and um, shows to your friends. So you can also limit the posts and limit certain things that um, certain people see by going here and clicking limit past posts. And you can also limit who can find you. So if you're happy for everyone to be able to um, find you and find your Facebook account, you can click everyone or you can go over to edit and you can change and you can say friends of friends. For me, if I am making a new account, I kind of want anyone to be able to search me because there may be some people that I have had from the past that that I want to connect with and if they may not be friends of friends. So I'm happy with that. However, I don't need them to be seeing anything on my profile. So I can also change that. So when you go on to the next one, it says who can see your friends list. So this is an option that you can use to hide your friend list. So when you add people on Facebook, you create almost like this little hub of friends of a community you can actually hide that so nobody can see the people that you're friends with. So you can click only me, which means no one can see who I'm friends with. Who can look up you during your email address? I think that it's a good idea that if someone has my email address, they can just look me up. Um, so I'm going to leave that for everyone, but the same as the other ones above, you can edit and you can change. And who can look you up using your telephone number? Wow. It says everybody, but I don't have my telephone number here, so no one could try even if they wanted to, but I am just going to choose only me. And do you want to search engine outside Facebook um, to link to your profile? I don't need that option, so I can click it and turn it off, but it's just a way if somebody was to Google your name, it could come up with Facebook, but it's not needed, so I'm going to turn it off. Does anybody have any questions on that particular part of privacy? So far, so good, SJ. Okay, so we're gonna go and click next to the home page. And I'm gonna show you briefly on how to upload a post. Now a post, I don't know why it's called post. 
And I guess it's because, you know, you used to post mail to each other and it's been brought online, but still needs the same, um, <laughs> same wording. So we're going to learn how to post. So we'll see here. It says create a post. It says, what's on your mind, Jane? Well, what's on my mind today? I went on a beautiful walk. So I think that I need to share with everybody my beautiful view. Okay, so we're gonna go back to Facebook. So here when I click um, create post, it says say something about these photos. In order to add a photo, I'm gonna click photo, video, and it's gonna bring up the desktop. Can you see the two photos here? Yes, now we can see it. Yes, I'm just gonna click this one. And I'm going to show come up twice. So in order, if, if that ever happens, you just click the X and it's going to disappear. If you don't want it anymore, you're just going to either click here, click out, and it's going to take it away. Or you can just click and it's going to make it disappear. So I went on a beautiful walk. So I want everybody to be able to see this beautiful walk. So I'm going to say today's beautiful few. And all I'm going to do is click post. And this is now on my feed. And the only people that can see it is my friends that are on Facebook. If you are not my friend on Facebook, you cannot see this photo. For example, if I accidentally uploaded a photo and I want to delete it, I'm going to go over to these three little dots here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to delete photo. And that is going to delete the photo that we have just uploaded. So I am quickly just going to go over to my page and I'm going to go over to these three little dots here and I'm going to click view as. This is not something that you need to do, but I'm just going to show you so that you know what my Facebook page looks like to a person just searching my name. Okay, so, one, quick, one quick question about the uh, posts is someone asked if you have to post a photo or if you can just do text or whatever you want in there. You can do text. You don't have to put photos. You can do text. You can say what's on your mind. You don't even have to post if you don't want to. Most of the time I don't post anything. I'm just there to look at um, everybody else's posting on the feed or to check out. Yeah, or to check out Celebration Magazine's page, which we'll obviously go to momentarily. But I, you can just post text. You don't have to post photos. So we're on this page here. And this is just basically showing you what you would see, not as my friend. You would just see my profile picture has been uploaded. You would see the cover photo has been uploaded. If I clicked about me, you would see none of that information because guess remember, I didn't want to have it. Friendship, you would, even if I did have friends, they would say no friends to show because I don't want you to see my friends. Photos, the same thing, you can make them private and you can make them public or you can make them just friends. So if, um, if I had photos, still the person that can spew this um, content from a public platform cannot see any of this. They can just see my name, my profile picture, and my cover photo. That is it. Does anyone have any questions about that part? Well, I do have a question about privacy. Um, and it comes, so they asked, how do they remove people that they don't know and speak foreign languages? Okay, so you don't, so for example, if somebody sends you a friend request, you don't have to accept it. You can remove, 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 remove. You don't need to have them on there. You get to choose who it is that is on your profile. And if that person isn't your friend and they send you a message, it will go to a different inbox. It will not go to your personal inbox and you don't ever have to click it. You don't ever have to have contact with that person. You can remove the, um, the messaging. So if we click here, it's going to give us, I don't have any messages currently, 
but it does give us the option to create a message. So if I hover over this and I create new message, I'm gonna click on new message and it's gonna come up on the bottom of my screen. Now, if I have a friend on Facebook, I am going to type in their name and their name is gonna pop up. And then I am able to type in a message to them. And then at all, any time, I can cancel that message. If I have friends, you see this bo box at the bottom where it says chat, I would click on it and it would come up with a list of people that I'm friends with and it will tell me if they're currently online. And if they aren't online, I can click on their name and automatically they are going to come up and I can type to them. So it is pretty self-explanatory that part. Um, you just need to hover over this little box and it says, new message or you click the top you click messages and you type there new message and it's going to give you the option to be able to type in the person that you want to um, type to and remember they have to be your friend in order for you to type to them and then you can send them a message you can also type in their name in the search engine when they are your friend, you get taken over to their profile and you can also message them on there. And you will see this little box and you, if you're your friend, you will be able to click on that box. You see now here, because it's a public profile, they are not my friends. So look at this box. They are unable to message me. They're not allowed to message me. And I like that um, safety uh, procedure. It means that people from, you know, it, it, it means that maybe someone accidentally could send me a message and not mean to, but they can accidentally send me a message if I, if I am, um, have made my profile private. Any other questions on that part? Okay, so lots. So we're going to go back to the friends thing again. Yeah. Um, how do you remove or edit your friends? Okay, so when you have friends, so I'm going to um, add you as a friend. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. And then I will approve it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to add so as a friend. So so is going to soon accept me. Yep. So you guys can see how this part works. All right. There you are. Okay, we should be connected now. Okay, and you see these little messages? I've got two notifications. So this is the notification telling me that so had, there's somebody here called Karen that has sent me a uh, friend request. I'm gonna uh. delete that. Well, she's in our Zoom I know, I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> just so you know, I will tell you how to find me because this account is, is, is just a made up one. I will tell yeah. you how to find me on celebration. So don't you worry. I am sorry for deleting your friend request, mm. but <laughs> I've accepted those, but thank you. We could have, we could have used you, but I didn't mm. want to delete you that way. <laughs> so we go over to those celebration magazine, um, profile and we have friends follow message and the free little dot. Now, if I wanna message her, I'm just gonna click message and it's going to bring it up and it says type a message. So I'm gonna say, hey Zoe. And she's gonna. I'm gonna hear that bing. Yeah, so she's gonna see that and she's gonna reply to me. And you can see that she's typing away there. So she's, she has got my message and she is able to respond to me. Now, all of a sudden, oh, you're very welcome Zoe. <laughs> All of a sudden, I don't want to be Zoe's so, so friend, which is not the true case, but for this video, I don't want to be Zoe's friend. I'm going over to the friend part of the section, and I'm going to cancel my request. So now me and Zoe are no longer friends on Facebook. If you do want to find me, all you need to do is search SJ Celebration. And there I am. So you can add me as a friend if you would like. I will accept that one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, one thing we did ask, we did have somebody ask, if you delete a friend, does Facebook notify them? No, Facebook doesn't notify them. That's a good thing. And also, for example, if you want to completely 
get them off your Facebook, we're gonna go over to settings again. So settings, this button here says blocking. Now, if we have somebody on Facebook that we do not even want to look at our profile, all we need to do is type in their name and then they will never be able to see our profile. So for example, let's see if this works because we're no longer friends. So I am blocking so celebration. And I don't even have to be her friend in order to do that. I can just find her name and I can block her straight away, which is a good option for you to be able to have if you do have anyone that you do not want to be even knowing you're on Facebook. So that's an option for you. Okay, fantastic. All right, so we have a lot, a lot of questions about keeping Messenger safe, how to use it. It works on one device, not another. What is it? I am thinking that we maybe need to know another Zoom and learn about that one. <laughs> um, getting messages and keeping it safe. I think the, the fundamentals of that is the same as everything else. It's your account. You make sure that it's safe and your password is safe. I know that if you have an iPhone, it's a different app. So I guess that's what you're probably um, meaning by like yes. a different, um, with that, if you're using your phone, your phone is your phone. So you should, if you have a code on it or, um, it's the same as if you receive a text message from somebody that's as safe as if you're receiving a messenger for somebody. So ask yourself that question. Like, do you feel safe receiving texts from your friends? It's the same as you should feel safe to receive a text or a message from your Facebook because it's on the same software that you're using. Um, on the desktop view, it is the same platform. So you do not need another app. On your telephone, on your mobile phone, you do need to download Messenger. And that's just a separate, app so that you can quickly go to all of your messages and answer them directly. Okay. So this is something you might have said that I missed, but somebody brought up about receiving unwanted messages. Is there a way that you can either disable the messenger completely or set it up so that way you can only receive messages from people on your friends list? Are you able to do that? Yes. So for example, before when I said that I've set my profile to private, Good. if you're not a friend of mine, you're not allowed to send me a, prof uh, a, a message. It's not allowed. And if you are a friend of mine, you can. But if, if anything does happen where somebody sends you a message, which it, it wouldn't if you change, if you follow the steps that I have shown you, because we've just, you've just seen then, if you're not my friend, you cannot message me. But if you didn't do those steps, um, before somebody becomes a friend of yours and if they can message you, if they message you, it will go into message requests. So for example, Karen, you're my favorite person today. Love this. <laughs> this is okay. helping. Karen has sent me a message that says hi. So if I click on her, um, I don't have to answer it and I don't, if I, I, I can reply if I want to, or I can t uh, message saying I don't want to hear from um, that particular person. So that's an option too. I greatly appreciate you doing that, Karen. You have literally made this such an easy process <laughs> because it's always good to be able to show when a person has done that. So thank you. Make sure you send me a request on my other account so I can accept that. Okay, Karen? I already did. Good deal. Then I will accept it after this Zoom. Okay. okay, does anyone have any other questions? I know the, the messages, um, I think we've briefly gone over the, the basics of that. Um, but like I said, um, it's just as safe as if you're, if you're texting somebody on your mobile. If you feel comfortable with that, you should feel comfortable um, with the Facebook Messenger. If you set up your profile and follow the steps that I have um, made, and remember this is getting recorded, so we'll be able to um, put it on to a platform for you to be able to look back on and be able to learn. So um, Linda Roten actually brought up a really, really good point um, about Messenger. Um, so she's receiving messages from friends that say FB limits you to most recent 25 friends. To get access, you must copy and post this message. So there, there are, 
So no, that is not a legit posting. Well, I would say, you know, I would, with those type of things, they're not coming from the source. If you receive that from Facebook and Facebook had sent you it in your email box or they've notified you from the platform, trust this. That is all I can say. If you see um, like a, a message going around that's saying, um, oh, this is happening, 25 people, da, da, da. this is a chain message and we all know what chain messages are. They're basically like Chinese whispers. Um, anything it, that you are signing yourself up to. We um, don't know what Chinese whiskers are, but it oh, would be Chinese like an, an like old a, an old fashioned chain mail letter yeah. that you used to send snail mail. It's the exact same thing. Exactly. Um, and one other thing that I think is important to mention is if you receive a message, no matter who it's from, I never click links mm -hmm. in any messages that I receive because they could, um, they, they could redirect to somewhere bad, like with those chain messages. Um, a lot of people, you know, if you don't repost this, this is going to happen to you. So I don't ever uh, click any of the links that are provided. Or if someone says, hey, I found your picture on the internet. That's a new one going around right now. Also, click this link to view it. That is another chain message. So you don't yeah. want to, um, don't want to click those. And I agree with that. And that's not just coming onto your Facebook because that's also coming into your email address. So you have to be careful. If, you're cho if you are choosing to have these platforms, then you also need to choose the responsibility to be able to make it safe for yourself. Um, with having an email address, if someone's going to send you a link, then you've got to be careful of who you're opening up. So for example, like we're sending you links, we're making sure it's safe for you to be able to open um, for you to access the Zoom events, we know that they're safe because we're providing them and we're also getting it from a legitimate resource. But there is people in the world that can get your email address and they can send you whatever they want. And you've just got to be mindful and you've just got to take that on, use your initiative and just be like, okay, well, I don't need to be clicking this link um, and I don't need to be accessing this link. It's the same thing when, um, I guess, um, people send you mail in your mail and it says you've won this and you you read the letter and it's a it's a false it's a false you haven't won anything but they're hoping that you are going to be able to take that and you're going to be like oh i've won i've won something and then they're hoping to you will give them your details it's the same thing with that trust what you think is going to be the best um, best way in order to make yourself more safe Wonderful. Uh, Linda Hogue didn't want to know how you would change your email address from an Ooh. old one to a new yeah. one. That's a so good, here where it says contact one. information and it says uh, primary email address. Um, so you wanting to set up a new email address as in for a new Facebook account or what do you mean by um, new email address? It says how to change old email address to new. Linda, did you? On your Facebook account. Yeah, on the Facebook account. Okay, so you would go here to contact and you'd say primary. And then you can also add another email address. And where that says primary, you could then change it and make that one your primary address. But if you have an email address that is um, connected to the Facebook account, um, then generally you would use the email address in which you would um, which you have set the, set the account up with, but you can do that. You can change it. Cause I know that we, we do sometimes change platforms and change email addresses, but yes, that's how you do it. You go to contact, you press edit, and then you are going to add another email address. And then you're going to click to change that to your primary source. All right. All right. I think we've got it good for now. Okay. Move so on. So the part that I, I'm so excited to share with you, which is my favorite part, and I know many of you people have come on today to learn about is Celebration Magazine. So we're gonna type it in, Celebration Magazine, and we're gonna click enter. <gasps> Look at this beautiful page here. Okay, so 
when we type in Celebration Magazine, it is going to pull us up of different things that are related to this particular word or words. Now, Celebration Magazine, because we are awesome and we post and we are always connected and we have amazing 5.2K people that follow us, um, we are the first people that come up, which is all down to you, all down to the people that are following us, which is fantastic. So in order to like our page, we hover over here and we click like, or for the demonstration of this video, I don't ever, um, we're going to go over to the celebration magazine. We're going to click it and we're going to be taken to our page. Now, the minute that we like this page is going to also let us follow it. Following the page allows us to be able to, um, it allows Facebook to put us on your newsfeed. So whenever we post, you will be notified. If you're not notified, it will be one of the first things you see when you log into your Facebook page. Now, many of you that are on here, and I have to wave my finger around a little bit, you, you're liking all of our photos, which I'm so happy about, but you're actually not liking our page. I've sent you an invite, but you have not liked it. So what I ask you to do today is after the Zoom is to type in Celebration Magazine, go into our page and like it. So by liking it, you just, I'm gonna unlike for the purpose of this video. We're just going to like the page and it's going to allow us to follow it. Now, I'm gonna scroll down, look at that. We're gonna do a little promo. This, um, this Thursday, make sure you've registered for the George W. Bush Presidential Library Museum. It's gonna be a great one, I'm really excited for that. We already have 265 um, people registered, so it's gonna be amazing. Also tomorrow, we have Zoom Bingo. We are notifying you of all of the events that, um, that are going on on our Facebook page, so you can actually see um, all of the events through September. So when the new magazine goes live, I will upload October, November, and kindly the team have put even December's events in. So you will have December events on there as well. So that's always a really cool thing. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down. The fun thing about Facebook is it's so different compared to the emails. I love creating the emails and I love sending them to you, but I really do love posting on Facebook and engaging and remembering certain things that you say and being able to um, comment and being able to reply to you and being able to just find out more about you as an individual. I think that's really cool. And also I get to create some fun um, interactive posts. So for example, today is National Ice Cream Cone Day. So I made a post that said, it's National Ice Cream Cone Day. Which one would you pick? A, vanilla, B, chocolate, C, strawberry. So for now, for the purpose of this, this video, in the comment section, if you can, type in A, B, or C. Would you choose A, vanilla, B, chocolate, or C, strawberry? Can you do that for me? In my chat? Everybody in the chat, yes. We got some Bs, some Bs, couple Cs, more Bs and Cs, Bs, Bs, mostly Bs. I see really? mostly Bs, a couple Cs, and then Karen says she wants A and B. <laughs> well, you can have both, I'm gonna allow that. See, I'm a, like, I love chocolate. I think you can get really good strawberry ones, but I would mm -hmm. have to choose vanilla if I chose one, because you can't go wrong with a vanilla. But that's, you see the way you've just um, wrote in the chat box? You get to do that on Facebook with us. So the post that I made the other day was you can only choose one. You can have apples, bananas, oranges, and strawberries. And if we click the comment section, everyone has wrote um, what they want to choose and what they would choose. And some people write funny things. It's really good. Look, Helen, who's in here today, she wrote strawberries. I enjoy them cut up in my yogurt. I do too, Helen. And look, she's a top fan. She is a top fan, and that also notifies me if you're a top fan. So if you're commenting and liking on all of our stuff, you become a top fan of the Facebook page, which I think is cool. I try and strive to be a top fan. And you can also like our post. It's very important because liking our post and commenting on our post lets us know and lets Facebook know that what we are putting out there, you like. Therefore, 
therefore it's going to put what we do in front of you more. So if you like it, it's also going to give you a notification um, to, um, to say if we're, well, it's not always gonna give you a notification, but for example, if you comment and I reply to you, you're gonna be notified that I reply to you. I'm gonna show you though how to turn the notifications off because we can get a lot of people that are commenting and we do not want to always be sent notifications all the time. So for example, you know, let's write in the chat box again. If you were to choose one of these, what one would you choose? And then I'm gonna write my choice in the comment section. Hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna click on these free little dots and all we're gonna do is press either turn on notification or turn off notification. If you don't wanna see and be notified about comments, you can turn it off. And if you do wanna be notified, you can turn it on. Now, like I said, sorry, my internet went then, so I apologize for that. The last thing that we're gonna go over today is um, talking about this video. So this video is gonna be recorded and Dan will uh, make sure that it's suitable for you to be able to learn everything. And um, in order to do that, we need to be getting on our YouTube page. So our YouTube page is something that we have just nearly hit two, 200 subs. So we're hoping to be able to hit more. Let me know if you lose me or if I'm still here. You're still here so far, so good, SJ. Okay. So in order to be able to um, get to our YouTube page, hold on one second, my page is loading. We're gonna be able to search into the YouTube channel. So if we go to youtube.com, just gonna load. You still hear me, yes? Oh, yes. Still gotcha. Okay. And in the search engine, we are going to type in Celebration Magazine. And remember, in the emails, we are providing the links to this. And if you ever need the links, you can always go onto our website. We also have them on there. But we are on our YouTube channel. We obviously need to subscribe. We are four away from 200 subs. So please help us get to 200 subscribers. I can't subscribe right now because I haven't signed in, but I am subscribed to our, uh, our channel. All we need to do is press Celebration Magazine Live. And we have a live, oh, let's get to 200 and even past 200. So there's gonna be a library of Zoom events that you may have attended. And there's going to be Zoom and Learns. And this, once edited, we'll try and get it into um, a format. I know that the internet has been going off, so thank you for being patient with that. But we'll get it on so that you can go back to it and learn how to create your own personal Facebook page and make it as secure as possible, okay? And I'll, and try, and have this I'll try and have this video up for you guys by, uh, by Friday is my goal, to have this video available for y'all Friday. And I'm going to make a, um, it either will be a PDF or I think possibly it may be something that we have on the website so that you can, um, like a how-to, or it may be a PDF. We haven't decided yet, um, but it does not cost anything to have YouTube. I've just seen that in the, um, in the chat box. YouTube is a free software. Um, it, you can subscribe to it just like a Netflix account, but you don't need to. It's a free software. So one thing that I am going to do um, my disclaimer on this is when you use YouTube free, okay, when you watch one of our videos, there will be free ads that play in front of those videos, okay? You do have a skip ad option, um, but do want to let everyone know that the ads that play are randomly created by YouTube and in no way are ads chosen by or put on there by Celebration Magazine Live. And the only reason that I'm bringing this up right now is, is we are in political season and there are a lot of political ads that are being placed on um, YouTube videos. So just so everyone is aware that if anything shows up that they are not chosen by us, then those are coming from YouTube itself. 
but we have a lot of great resources on our YouTube page, including, you know, how to play bingo, uh, how to actually use a, use the bingo page, uh, use your bingo card on here. So if you are ever looking for, you know, how to play bingo, we can show you how to do that. Or if you want to go to the Dallas World Aquarium uh, oh, Zoom right. Learn event that we did, um, here we go. Hold on. This was a while ago. Glass is painted on its face. So you can see you other events that on we've your done. View that it looks. Like you can do see other events that we've done on here, including you know we'll have the George W. Bush Library event up that we're doing Thursday. This will be up. That'll be up there as well. So anything, any lighting that we have. So anything that we've done minus games, you know, Zoom and Learns or museum tours, things like that, you can find them on our on our YouTube page. So. Fantastic. All right, SJ, was there anything else that you wanted to add to our presentation today? I think we are complete. If you do have any questions, you can always um, email me at sjmid at celebration.com and also in the email on Sunday, um, you can, um, you'll see it at the bottom of the email. And also come and join me on Facebook. I would love to have you there. And you can send me, you can actually send me celebration sj celebration a friend request and i will accept you on there too and that's m-i-d just one d for her email because i made the mistake the first time of doing two <laughs> you know what i would if i would have made it myself i probably would have done two so we're, we're happy with it it's okay <laughs> all right everybody if you want to unmute yourself let's give sj a big round of applause i know there was a ton of information but she did an amazing, amazing